Honestly, I see the question here, do we attack or do we retreat? The answer to that question is actually secret option number three. We do nothing. Hey everybody, I decided to take you outside with me. I hope you appreciate it. The different surrounding. I am holding my mic close to my mouth so that you can hear me because there are a lot of noises. Some of them beautiful sounds like um, <laughs> little birds singing. Sing it girlfriend. This is an unasked for VR to Lennon Smith. And I just want to say thank you for that video because I really needed that inspiration and you've definitely given me a good reason to do another unasked for VR. Lennon went through the right away Smith imagery and basically pointed out the things that don't make sense to her in the deck or that seem a little out of place, a little weird, and it's very entertaining to watch. I suggest you go ahead and watch her video in case you haven't seen it yet and then come back to this one. Obviously, I'll link it below. The part of the video that struck me most was her interpretation of the Rider Waite Smith Seven of Swords. I brought my deck. This, of course, is Pixie's artwork, and we can analyze that because everything is in the tarot and everything, therefore, in this deck is a hell of a puzzle. I think this is gonna be good. So first of all, I loved that Lennon incorporated her knowledge of different systems into the Rider Waite Smith. Now, Toth can be considered a system close to the Rider Waite Smith uh, meanings because obviously the Toth and the Rider Waite Smith both equally to a certain extent originated from the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and used McGregor Mather's work. So in the Seven of Swords in the Rider Waite Smith, it's interesting that Lennon said tournament because I'd never seen it in that sense. To me, I always saw a camp that's put up by soldiers or warriors engaged in a fight, in a war. And the person in the foreground is stealing their weapons to weaken the opposition. And then, of course, the question comes up, which side are we on as readers, as witnesses of this event taking place? Then, of course, can we even pick a side in this battle? Because there are many different ways to interpret this card, many different ways to interpret every card. And yeah, I want to get into that a little bit. And all I'm saying is I'm just sharing. There, This is not like the one truth or something. It's, um, of course, with the knowledge on the tarot, but also my own opinions and my own findings. The insight of the fact that the swords are... Well, let's look at another card. <laughs> I have the Two of Swords as well, right here. Two of Swords. Because this uh, card also came up and it's going to be important in this video. The swords can be seen as symbols of power or even in the eyes of the people engaged in the fight that we see in the Seven of Swords, but also in the Five of Swords, for instance, in the eyes of the people engaged in the fight against one another, they can be seen as ways to strengthen themselves or weaken the opposition by means of winning the swords or taking the swords away, stealing them. Now, this, taken literally, is a dangerous practice, of course. Also looking at it figuratively, honestly, it can become very toxic very quickly because where is the resolve, you know? Do we really only care about winning? And what are we trying to prove? What are we trying to achieve? And do we really want to engage in this fight, in any fight? Is this our fight? Because one way or another, someone is going to lose. And not only that, actually both parties are going to lose. Everybody is losing in the end due to so-called war casualties or war victims, victims of war. 
which are both things that shouldn't exist. All modern wars are happening because of filthy money. It makes a select group of people filthy rich to have a war going on somewhere on the planet at all times. As I said, the Two of Swords also came up in the video and I like that Lennon incorporated Crowley's interpretation of the Two of Swords because it sheds light on the layered meaning of that card. Now the two could be considered, um, it's just my own findings, could be considered the most balanced card out of the sword suit. It's the most balanced, it's the most healthy, and it's, I'd say, a sage and reasonable card because it proposes the option of stop the fight. We don't need to play this game because it's not really a game, is it? It affects people negatively. And this petty war that we've got going on is, is spreading and everything is out of balance. And we are trying to actually find the balance. And honestly, I see the question here, do we attack or do we retreat? And the answer to that question is actually secret option number three. We do nothing. Because the Two of Swords isn't just about making a decision. You know, let's look a little deeper. It's not just about you have to make a decision. It means we've already hurt each other. Now look at the situation. Will it get resolved if we both keep going down this path? No. Nine times out of ten, the answer to that is no. Now, unfortunately, the rest of the sword suit proves that. Now, I do get a lot out of interpreting the swords as communication and not just pain and negativity and all of that, just negative, dark stuff. On the other hand, it's really not like we can deny the hurt and the pain that is depicted in that very suit because honestly thinking about it as their weapons and it is about a fight and war and quarrel and conflict uh, it does show the ugly side of human nature doesn't it and there's pride and there are blind spots and there's hurt and pain as i said and misery and injury and weapons that are used to weaken or kill taken that symbolically sometimes sure the ends justify the means. I actually believe that to a certain extent, but not in the long run, right? Not really. Not for our souls. Not for our kind nature. Our better judgment, to be honest. Now, something, a point that I do want to make that um, I think shouldn't be ignored, though, is that we do need to look at every situation separately. There's no formula that we can just copy and paste and apply to every single situation, to every single encounter, but our minds need to be in communication with our hearts. That's my point. So the suit of swords can be interpreted as a type of warning, a cautionary tale of human nature, but it also, in my opinion, tells a story of a sort of a resolve and reconciliation. Now I think there's so much water depicted in the sword suit of this deck. It's crazy the amount of water that's shown in these cards. Water obviously being the feelings, the emotions, the heart, the love, cleansing us from bitter thoughts. Excuse me. Oh, the cutest, tiniest bird. It's small like this. What are you? There are just a few other Rider Waite Smith, or, or should I say RWS WTFs, that I want to address. <laughs> that was hard to say, quite a tongue twister. The King of Cups. To me, he isn't adrift. In my understanding of the card, he is sitting on this large rock or stone, because it does look like it's stone or cliff, honestly, that stands firmly on the bottom of the sea. 
he remains standing as the sea gets more and more chaotic and dangerous around him. That is a symbol for how much he has mastered his emotions and his reaction to situations around him. Of course, you know, that's why we always say, don't react, just act. Because a reaction usually doesn't truly come from within ourselves. An action is at least considered. Then I got the equivalent in a minor arcana, which I call twin cards to the justice card. Um, Lennon said that would be the two of swords. Now, obviously, there's a different approach that you can take and see that in the Six of Pentacles as well, because of the scales there. And this would be the swords, the sword of truth, decision making, and of course the blindfold, because you have to make that decision within yourself, I guess. And it's the, the, the real truth. Um, and the balance is right here, which also, you know, matches the justice card very well, because it's not just about truth, it's also about balance. And making things as fair as possible for everyone. I'd say this thing on the foot, underneath the foot of the King of Pentacles is a helmet. And the reason, to me at least, is what I thought, that we get this Libra sign, or rather, it's just scales, right? <laughs> on the Ten of Pentacles is that um, I always saw this card as a marketplace in the middle of a village or city. And so to me, that was always just because you need to weigh stuff in order to sell them at their price. So maybe that's just a little less esoteric than you thought, but that's just always, that was always just my thought. Then finally here, the four of wands, I have a whole video about this very card and I implement Marseille meanings and Toth meaning as well and trust me it makes sense because I never read this card purely and simply as a celebration obviously that is a part of it but there's much more to it as well. So this is the first real stability you know but also what I see in this card is um, yes a celebration but it's a wedding and it's a wedding of alchemy, alchemical wedding. So that would mean that the emperor and the empress get together. So if you want to know more about that, check out one of my older videos. I'll link it. Well, those were my two cents. I um, hope you enjoyed this Anas for VR. I will see you in the next one. See you very soon. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm just getting over my filming in public fear and awkwardness. Ah, it works well, it works well. I'm not really alone, am I?